Hi, I'm Miss Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. Get ready to dive 13,000 feet deep below the surface of the water to a dark place called the Midnight Zone, where a mysterious creature lives in the cold, dark waters. Parts of this fish might seem scary. It has very big teeth. But other parts might seem cool. It has its own light. You might have seen this fish in the Disney film, Finding Nemo. Do you recognize this fish? Do you know what it's called? It's called an angler fish because it has a lure just like an angler or fisherman uses to catch fish. We'll learn lots of cool things about this creature in the book, Angler Fish. Sea Devil of the Deep. Then we'll make our own anglerfish out of a paper plate, just like this guy right here. So let's get started with the book, Anglerfish, Sea Devil of the Deep. Anglerfish, the Sea Devil of the Deep. Written by Elaine M. Alexander and illustrated by Fiona Fogg. Published by Candlewick Press. Far, far below the ocean's surface, where no trace of sunlight can reach, Anglerfish makes her home. She glides slowly through the dark water, always on the hunt. Her jaw protrudes, bearing razor-sharp teeth. She is a fearsome creature. She is the sea devil of the deep. Anglerfish did not always reside in the shadow. Her life began as a tiny egg on the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. As a baby fish or fry, she floated gently in the light and feasted on plankton. Near the surface, Danger lurked everywhere. Fishing nets and hungry predators prowled the waters. One, two, three years passed. Anglerfish grew. Her torso rounded and her fins lengthened. When her fishing rod sprouted from her forehead, anglerfish began her descent into deeper water. Halfway there, where streaks of sunlight still tease their way through the gray-green ocean, anglerfish wobbled in the water. Her cousin monkfish swept by. Monkfish's broad, brown-green body glistened, and his mouth gaped in the murky sea. Fishing boats come trawling. Engines turn as they drag a net, scooping whatever is in its path. Anglerfish dodges, diving even deeper, until sunlight is only a memory. Her dark skin is an effective camouflage, allowing her to blend in to her surroundings. Dark as midnight, anglerfish makes her own light. A tiny bioluminescent lure glows at the tip of a thin pointed fin that grows between her eyes. She glides alone, fierce, Hungry, patient. With a waggle of her tail, she's buried in mud and sand, dangling the glowing orb like her very own fishing pole. Anglerfish waits for a fish, a shrimp, or maybe even a crab to take the bait. Shadows shift. She wiggles her lure, hoping prey will mistake her light for a tasty morsel. A crab shuffles closer. Anglerfish's stomach distends. 
Her flexible jaw extends. She swallows her meal whole. It's only a morsel, but food is scarce in the midnight zone, and anglerfish can't afford to be picky. The cloud of sand settles. Anglerfish isn't alone anymore. A tiny male anglerfish circles, honing in on her back. Closer. Closer still. Then a pinch as he latches onto her tough skin. With a flick of her tail, Anglerfish swims on, carrying the tiny male's body through the dark, a stowaway on her solitary journey. Anglerfish is ready now. Her most important work begins. She releases eggs, too many to count. They stick together. A thin protective gel binds them on their journey. The massive spawn rises up through the ocean, higher and higher, until it is out of sight. Far, far below the ocean's surface, where no trace of sunlight can reach, in the darkest, most sparsely inhabited place in the sea, anglerfish is alone again. More about anglerfish. Anglerfish begin their lives as tiny eggs that are released into the ocean and float gently to the surface. As they grow into adulthood, they begin their descent to a depth of 3,300 to 13,000 feet below the surface. Sunlight does not penetrate to that depth. It is always as dark as a starless, moonless night. In fact, that depth is called the midnight zone. Adaptations Some species that live deep in ocean zones, where there is little or no light, have evolved to have large eyes. Some, like the female anglerfish, have the ability to make their own light. This is called bioluminescence. Female anglerfish use their glowing orb as bait, dangling it in front of their body to draw prey right to their mouth. By bringing their meals closer to them, they can conserve energy that they need to survive in the harsh, cold environment of the deep. Anglerfish are called the sea devils of the deep for their gaping jaws and razor sharp teeth, and they're always on the hunt. These deep sea dwellers look like a throwback from prehistoric times, but their adaptations are well suited to survive in the ocean's depths. Their dark skin allows them to blend into their surroundings. Any organism that an anglerfish lures close suddenly finds itself trapped like a prisoner in a cell. Anglerfish jaws work like spring hinges, snapping closed quickly as the fish swallows its prey whole. Female anglerfish vary in size from 6 inches to 3 feet long, depending on the species, while males are comparatively tiny, averaging 2.5 to 6 inches long. There are also other species of anglerfish, and some of them have some pretty funny names. Like frogfish, goosefish, red-lipped batfish, and even football fish. Wow, the anglerfish is pretty amazing and unusual creature. 
This book focused on just one kind of anglerfish that some call the sea devil of the sea, only because of its large teeth and spooky appearance. But these fish are of no harm to humans. For one, they're usually not that big, and they live very deep down in the ocean, too deep for people. In fact, we only ever really see them when they get caught in a deep sea fisherman's net. Very few people have seen them swimming in the ocean because they live so far down, where it is very dark. Only a few special cameras can capture any images that far down. I'll include a link in the description box below to a short YouTube video from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. They have recorded a rare sighting of an anglerfish. So look in the box below for the link. There are over 200 different kinds of anglerfish, some of which live closer to the surface of the water so we know a little bit more about them. Some of them have some pretty funny names too. Let's take a closer look at just a few of them. The book mentioned some other species of anglerfish. Let's take a closer look at them. We'll start with the monkfish that was mentioned in the story. If you look really close, you'll see that lure. Can you see it? Here are two different kind of frogfish. It blends in or camouflages so well you almost don't notice it till it moves. And here's its colorful friend. And here's a frogfish called the hairy frogfish. Can you guess how he got his name? And this member of the anglerfish family is called the red-lipped batfish. Can you guess why anglerfish come in so many different colors? Some are dark brown and black, while others are white or all kinds of colors. Well, the color of the anglerfish can help them camouflage or helps them blend in with their surroundings. This helps them hide from predators, and it also helps bring their dinner closer to them. Now, let's make our own anglerfish. You can use your choice of materials of whatever you have at home. Here are some suggestions. To make the body of your fish, you can use a paper plate or heavy paper. You'll also need something to make it colorful, and you've seen all the different colors that the anglerfish come in. So you'll need markers, crayons, paint, or watercolors. I use watercolors. Then you'll need something to make the lure, like a straw, a chenille stem, or even a piece of folded up construction paper. Then you'll need something to attach everything together, like tape or glue. Then you'll need something to make the light for the lure, like aluminum foil. You'll also need a piece of paper. And of course, you're going to need your imagination. First, you're going to make the fish body. Now you can paint or color the bottom of your paper plate. Now, like I said, you could also use a circular piece of heavy paper uh, instead of a paper plate. Now, if you color it, you don't have to let it dry, but if you use paint, you'll need to let it dry fully. Now I used watercolor, and here's a tip. You could try painting with a damp cotton ball for added fun and speed. That's what I did. Then you're going to go ahead and make the mouth. So you're going to cut out a pie shape part of the plate right here, just like that. 
And then once you've cut that pie shape out, you're going to have your mouth. And you can attach this pie slice to the back of the fish. And attach it with some glue or tape. Next, you're going to make an eye and teeth. So you're going to draw and cut out an eye for your anglerfish using a piece of paper. And then go ahead and glue it to the plate like you see right here. And then you're going to draw some jagged pointy teeth on a piece of paper, cut it out and glue it to the inside of your fish, just like that. Now you're going to make the lure. Now remember, the lure is the part of the anglerfish that comes out the top of the fish, it lights up, and it attracts the prey to the fish. Now, I used a straw and a piece of aluminum foil. You can use whatever you have at home. You can even use a piece of construction paper. Just take a strip of paper, fold it over a couple times, uh, tape it together or glue it together, Attach some aluminum foil at the end, and there you'll have your lure. Once you've made your lure, then go ahead and attach it to the back of your angler fish. Now you have your, dare I say, cute angler fish. I'll put the directions and the link to the video of the anglerfish in the description box below. I hope you had fun. I hope you keep exploring and I'll see you next time. Bye.